And these boys came and said, lie down. Elijah said, lie down for what? He started arguing with them until when they began to show instruments or weapons. One showed a pistol, the other one showed a very rugged dagger in his hand. And for me, <laughs> I didn't look at that side. I simply lay flat on the ground. And I saw them hitting Alaji, asking him to also lie down. I'd like to welcome viewers back to my video and the, the stories of my life. Um, I had earlier in the last video told you all the privileges God gave me opportunity to enjoy in Niger State, both as a copper and young estate surveyor and valuer. But there is this particular experience that is worth sharing with you in this particular video. The experience is the one I had, the opportunity I had to participate in the feasibility and viability study for the establishment of a primary mortgage institution by the Niger State Government through Housing Corporation called Niger House Building Society. Um, because of the trust and confidence, my, my leaders in my corporation, the heads of my corporation had on me when they set up the internal committee to prepare a feasibility study for the operation of Niger House Building Society. My name was listed as a member and I played a prominent role in preparation of that uh, document. And when we were done, I was also selected with the Secretary of the Corporation, Alaji Bobby, to travel to Lagos to make our submission. And we also went with a bank draft of five million naira uh, initial capital uh, deposit for running a mortgage institution, the first generation mortgage institutions that came up in Nigeria at that time. Niger House was one of the government sponsors, uh, sponsored uh, such institution. And so we prepared to travel to Lagos and I was excited that I was receiving such privileges even as a young estate surveyor and valuer on level eight alone at the time some of these things were happening i think of course i think i've become level nine officer i became a senior estate officer then and of course we, we are traveling to lagos with the official car of the secretary to niger state housing corporation who was leading the team while i was his only companion so we embarked on the journey and had gotten to the toll gate at a battle trying to go to Lagos. Uh, and it was becoming an evening time. The day had far gone. I guess it must be around between six and seven. And so suddenly we realized that our tires were having issues. Today I know better because somebody could have planted a nail or something that caused the tire to have the issue. Because immediately we cleared by the side before the toll gate. The toll gate was just ahead of us. And you can see reflection of light even from the toll gate. Some young men came from the roadside and met us where we were trying to change the tire. The driver was walking, of course, me and the uh, secretary to the government, uh, to the um, to housing corporation had come out of the vehicle to watch what he was doing and take fresh air. So as we are standing, these guys came. Alaji Bobby is a, a big structured human being. So he came out and was standing. I also came out. And these boys came and said, lie down. 
Elijah said, lie down for what? He started arguing with them until when they began to show instruments or weapons. One showed a pistol, the other one showed a very rugged dagger in his hand. And for me, <laughs> I didn't look at that side. I simply lay flat on the ground. And I saw them hitting Alaji, asking him to also lie down. And after some argument and resistance, he lied down. And then they ransacked. The driver was also asked to lie down. They ransacked the vehicle and could not find any, you know, serious money until they came to search our pockets again and took some of the money that was with us in our clothing. I'm sure they may have seen the draft that was in uh, Alaji's folder. And that is not useful to them. It's not the kind of thing they were expecting. And say so they just hit us, beat us with their shoes and boots, and then jumped into the bush with our wristwatches and all the things, the personal things they collected from us. And then we got up. And then the driver finished. Um, fixing the tire and we now crossed the toll gates. My story today is that that was a near death situation because many have been killed that way, particularly that the secretary to the corporation resisted them, could anger them to pull their triggers because they were really charged, they were drunk they were high they were not operating like normal human beings and so i cannot forget that experience even as i talk about it i can visualize myself on that ground i wasn't at this point thinking of any other thing but hoping that i will be alive after that particular experience god saved me and delivered me from that attack and also delivered the secretary, the driver. We went on that journey successfully, submitted a proposal, paid the five million naira bank draft, and of course came back to Mina. And in a short while, they now approved the license for the operation of Niger House Building Society. It was a successful trip, but God delivered us from what could have been a fatal attack on us on that road. So having gotten the license in Niger State Housing Corporation, considering all my contributions, when they advertised for positions, there were minimum positions that must be in the building society. And that included, I think, about uh, three managers apart from the general manager. One of them is the manager real estate and mortgages, which was actually a professional managerial post. There was also a manager for accounting, manager for, um, what do you call it now, for human resources. So we applied. Again, I must say that I didn't have confidence in myself to apply, knowing and being conscious that I was a non-indigent. And of course, I knew quite a number of indigents who were interested in the position. So, but I was encouraged to apply, and I did. And the interview came, and uh, God made it that I would be the one to be the manager of real estate and mortgages. And that interview, came up with the results and that gave me appointment later as manager real estate and mortgages in the Niger House Building Society. That totally changed my status. You know, I was a straight line civil servant and we didn't know so much about good housing allowance, good furniture allowance, just the mortgage institutions were patterned after the banks. And so, so many things I've never enjoyed before came my way. A young man, young estate surveyor, at the point we were to I'm talking about, I had not been registered. I was still a pupil estate surveyor, practicing and hoping 
that one day I'll become chartered or registered as an estate surveyor and valuer. But God gave me this opportunity. And we were fully equipped. One of the benefits that came was a car with a driver just to meet the status of financial institutions. And of course, the housing benefits, the furnitures and all that. So within the same manner as a non-indigent, suddenly my position changed and I got elevated. And of course, I'm sure that I was the envy of my contemporaries because there were other people of my age who were also working in government to see that I transformed from straight line civil servant to become uh, a financial institution manager was great, great, great change in my life, in my lifestyle. And that's what God did for me during my work in Niger House, build, Niger House Building Society. And of course, that institution was working and progressing very well until again in Nigeria, the mortgage institution started going down. I think about 1997, I had to resign in order to set up my own private firm because of the um, bad business that the mortgage institutions were facing at that time. This is my story as it concerns my being employed as manager, real estate and mortgages in Niger House Building Society. And I return all the glory to God who made it possible in another state, not in the state of my origin, not nearby Eastern state, but in far away Niger state in the north. It can only be God that made this possible. And I'm grateful to God. Thank you, viewers. God bless you. Ladies and gentlemen, Joseph came into Egypt a slave Hebrew boy 17 years old Jehovah made him Prime Minister Daniel and the three Hebrew children were taken as war captives to Babylon But Daniel became a president. Both Babylon and the Medo-Persian Empire. Mordecai was a gatekeeper. God Almighty made him prime minister under Ahasuerus. God specializes in taking nothing and making some things out of them. That is a story enacted again in the life of Abonta as a hearing. More of this is coming. The more the juicy part is still coming. Follow this story. Please subscribe to this channel. Send these videos to your friends. Follow what God is doing. We will land somewhere soon and you will hear that all along it's been Jehovah's hand. Thank you very much for tuning in today and God bless you.